Hi there, I'm James, your O2 guru. How can I help you today? Hi James, can you tell me about the O2 network? All right, <laughs> there's a lot to tell you. Where do I start? I've always wanted to know how a network actually works. Right, okay, well, let's start with how you get a signal, or coverage as we call it. If you take a map of the UK, you'll find lots of our mobile masts dotted around. Each of these masts has its own coverage footprint, transmitting and receiving signals for the devices within it. So how does my phone connect me to my friends in other coverage footprint areas? When you call a friend, your phone converts your voice from sounds to digital ones and zeros, and then transmits those ones and zeros to the mast by electromagnetic waves. And then from there, the digital signal gets routed to a mast in the cell where your friend's phone is. Sometimes this has to go via our core network, or the brain of our network, to check things like the security of the connection. Their phone picks up that signal and converts it back into speech again. And what about if I'm on the phone whilst moving between coverage footprint areas, like in a car or on a train? Good question. This is why we need to make sure our masts are close enough to each other so the coverage overlaps, but only very slightly. If they overlap too much, the signals may interfere and impact the sound of your call. That means the signal to and from your phone switches between masts smoothly and won't drop out. But for that to happen, those masts need regular testing and adjustment. We call this network optimization. So that explains phone calls. What about when my phone shows I'm connected to 4G, but my apps work slowly? Ah, OK, so you're talking about network capacity. And to understand that, we'll need to learn a bit more about the electromagnetic waves we use to transmit and receive signals. The technical name for these waves is Spectrum, and it's auctioned off by Ofcom to each of the operators. So if an operator has lots of Spectrum, their network will be able to hold a lot of digital traffic for customers to make calls, send texts, and use their apps quickly. However, Spectrum isn't an infinite resource, and it'll eventually be used up if there are too many customers using our network in one area. When that happens, your apps will run more slowly. Think of it as the difference between driving at speed along a nice empty road and getting stuck in a rush hour traffic jam where you'll still be moving, but more slowly because there's so many other cars in front of you holding you up. That's why we have to be careful with how we use our Spectrum so we can give you and every other O2 customer the best experience possible. That makes sense. How do you use your Spectrum then? Well, it's all to do with the different frequencies we have and the way they act in different environments. For example, if the spectrum frequency is low, the signal transmitted by the mast will travel further in distance and further into buildings through walls. So it's great not just for rural areas, but also in cities where there tend to be lots of buildings. And high frequency? The higher the frequency, the more the amount of people will be able to use our network in that area and with a faster connection. Think back to the traffic analogy earlier, where you're stuck in a traffic jam because there are so many cars on the road. A mast which uses high frequency spectrum would be like a motorway with more lanes. That's why it's great for busy urban areas where lots of people are trying to get a signal from the same mass at the same time. So why don't you just use high frequency spectrum everywhere? Well, as great as it is providing better signal to more people, it only travels a short distance, fading quickly and more easily blocked by things like buildings, trees, even bad weather. That's why it's not great in the countryside and better in places where we can build lots of masts close together, like in cities. I don't remember seeing lots of masts in cities. Ah, well, if you look hard enough, you will, but they're not the kind of tall masts you'd see out of town. See, not only do these high traffic, high frequency masts have to be much closer together in cities, but visually, they also have to fit in with the way the buildings look. And that's why we use what's called small cell technology. It's like normal mass, but much smaller. How much smaller? Oh, I'd say about the size of a shoebox. So you've got to look very carefully for our masts dotted around the city, but they're definitely there. For example, you might spot one if you take a closer look at the top of phone boxes or tube station signs. And out of town, in the countryside, how do you make sure your customers get the best signal? OK, so we at O2 have been investing millions to bring 4G connectivity to as much of the countryside as possible. But there's always more to do. So we've joined forces with other mobile operators to share masts in rural areas under an agreement called the Shared Rural Network. And this is going to bring 4G to 95% of the UK by 2026. The deal aims to bring coverage to over a quarter of a million more households and offices and onto nearly 10,000 more miles of roads for drivers. That's good to know. 
But these days, using so much electricity to power cell masts and all your other equipment surely isn't doing the environment much good. Yep, true. And that's why we're working as hard as we can to be not just as energy efficient as possible, but also to be the greenest mobile operator network in the UK. Wow, that's quite some ambition. So how are you planning to do that? We're well on our way to completely cutting carbon emissions and becoming net zero by 2025. And one of the ways we're doing this is by reducing capacity on our network to save energy when the demand on the network is low, like late at night. And when demand increases again, like in the mornings, we bring our network back up to full capacity. We already use 100% renewable energy where we control the energy bill. By 2025, we plan to switch all our third-party landlords who support the O2 network to renewables too. We're doing this by working with landlords to explore their options for switching. That's amazing. Talking of landlords, how do you get permission to put up all of your masts? Well, we have to arrange to rent space for each one, but there's no guarantee the rental agreement goes on forever. And if an agreement ends, there won't be any signal for you until we find a new space for a new mast. So if that happens, we have to act fast. We always try and fix network issues as quickly as possible to minimise the disruption to customers. But sometimes it's out of our control. Do you need planning permission for these masts? Oh yeah, absolutely. And getting that permission can take quite some time especially when it comes to masts along roads and highways, because planning application processes can be far too complicated. But we're working hard to make these processes simpler so you get a better service sooner. And if you have problems with one of your masts? Oh, sometimes we have to jump through hoops to get to it. And you should see some of the things we've had to deal with once we're there. We've seen masts completely covered in snow and totally iced up. At ground level, we've seen our cables chew through by local wildlife. And up on top of the mast, we often find birds nesting there. Suppose that'd explain why our signals get scrambled. <laughs> scrambled, get it? Eggs, <laughs> signals, scrambled eggs. Oh, you are such a comedian. <clears throat> Thank you, I try my best. But how do you know when you've got any kind of problems in the first place? Eggs, ice or otherwise? Well, we keep more than just one eye on our network. We monitor it closely 24-7, 365 days a year. If an automatic alarm goes off, we can often investigate and fix it remotely from the control centre. Otherwise, we send an engineer to identify the problem, or come back another time with replacement parts. Also, if you think there's a problem with the network in your area, you can check using our online status checker, the MyO2 app, the My Network app, or on our website. And if no issues are found, you can always report it, and we'll keep you updated on whether we find and fix the issue. That's great. I'll download the apps now. I think that's just about answered all my questions. Excellent. Well, we're always glad to help. So see you again soon.